Welcome one and all. I'm Mark Passio of whatonearthishappening.com. It's a pleasure to be here today to present at the Greater Reset 5. Thank you to Derek and John for inviting me to speak and to all the other great organizers of this event for hosting it. My presentation today is entitled, Why We're Losing, Seven Reasons the Freedom Movement is Failing. And a lot of people kind of tend to get on me for uh, being so tough on people within the freedom movement, especially. And I want to tell people today that I'm going to go over some very specific reasons why I am. And hopefully by the end of the presentation, people will uh, more fully understand if they truly really listen to what I'm saying here, um, why we have not as a species made much progress and much movement toward true human freedom. So let's jump into the presentation. As always, I start my presentations with some basic caveats and warnings. The first is always that there is nothing new that you will be seeing here today. As the ancient saying goes, there is nothing new under the sun. Uh, number one, this means that things have not changed and there has not been any real new progress uh, in the human condition. Uh, it has remained the same over the centuries. Uh, the, the phrase, nothing new under the sun, also means that the truth has always been here and it will always be here. Uh, it's eternal. It is something that um, just simply needs to be fully recognized. Uh, that it is the way things are and that it has always been like that. Um, once that is recognized, then maybe we can make some progress and change things and create something new. But all I can really do um, is present what I'm going to present in a personalized framework with my own style and my own aesthetics applied. Uh, the information itself is uh, pretty much uh, something that has always been with us. So a lot of people say, oh, I'm not hearing anything new here. Well, you're not going to hear anything new. Uh, until humanity uh, grows up and makes some progress in consciousness and frees itself from the condition of slavery, there's not going to be much new here on this planet. It's basically the same thing uh, all the time. So people have to understand that and uh, not expect this to be some news show uh, or some form of entertainment in which they're always being hit with something brand new. Uh, this is something that, uh, while ancient, has still not been learned and integrated by the human species, and that's why we're in the situation that we're in regarding human freedom. The second thing I always tell people in my presentations is feel free to get as offended as you like by anything I'm about to say. This presentation is for psychologically mature adults who are ready and able to hear factual information and truth. It is not for those who appear to be adults bodily, but who still have the psychological mentation of a child, meaning those who attempt to think and reason with their emotions. As soon as they hear something that rubs them the wrong way, they say, oh, that must be uh, you know, disinformation. That can't be true. Uh, I can't accept that. I can't entertain that notion. You know, and real intelligence is being able to uh, look at something from an objective standpoint, getting your emotions out of the way and neither accepting it immediately nor rejecting it immediately. That's where real intelligence begins. So, you know, don't be the little kid who puts his hand over his ears because he, uh, his feelings are hurt by truth that someone's telling him, you know, uh, I've been putting this uh, phrase in some of my recent presentations. If you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. But if you are absolutely determined to learn, no one can stop you. And that's the attitude that people in the freedom movement really have to take more, that they don't have all the information that they need. And they need to hear things that r remove them from their comfort zone, from the things that you know, they think they already know and I, they don't need to know anymore. I encounter this continually in the freedom movement, that people think they have all the information that they need when they absolutely do not. So, you know, if you do hear some things that, uh, you know, ruffle your, your feathers a little bit, uh, step back, 
attempt to calm your emotions and think about whether the statement is true or not regarding uh, how it applies to the human condition and the freedom movement in particular. I'm very hard on the freedom movement for very good reasons. These are people who should know better. These are people who should be making more progress in their understanding. And very unfortunately, I see very, very little of that, even within the freedom-oriented movement. People who are, you know, saying that they recognize the loss of human freedom and the encroachment of tyranny in our world. Um, and yet, they really don't identify the true underlying causal factors. And I'm tough on those people because to tell them that they're doing better than they actually are does them a disservice. It is setting them up for further failure in the future instead of being honest with them and telling them you're nowhere near the correct answers. Uh, you're not helping to um, influence and change other people's thinking and consciousness. And that's the number one reason why the movement is not going to make any progress now or in the future for that matter. So the principle here is that you do a grave disservice to someone else by telling them that their performance toward a certain goal in any particular endeavor is better than it actually is. It is far better to tell someone the truth about their poor performance in an endeavor toward their goal and hurt their feelings even if that becomes necessary rather than to lie to them and hurt their future chance for success. And this is one of the main reasons that I'm as tough as I am on people in the freedom movement. If you had Olympic athletes training for a track and field event and the person that you're training or the people you're training, their times uh, in their particular event are terrible and there's no way they're going to win a medal with that kind of performance. And you tell them, oh, it's fine. You're going to take the gold medal or the silver medal uh, in the Olympic Games. Uh, you're not helping them. You're not helping them to do better. You're not helping them to train even at a higher level than they need to in order to reach peak performance in order to do well uh, toward their goal, which is to win a medal in an Olympic sport. Um, if you tell them they're better than they are, that's an absolute disservice to them. And that's the main reason that I'm as harsh as I am uh, on the freedom movement in particular, as I said. So keep that in mind. That's the reason that I generally make presentations that are telling people something that is very negative and something that is being honest with them about where their actual performance is. Because if you say you want the result, if you say you want true freedom, then you have to meet the requirements in order to gain it. And the requirements are not what most people think that they are. They're not coming up with a new system. They're not um, inventing some new technology or you know, creating some new system of organization or making some new cryptocurrency or, or any number of other things. The way that we are going to get ourselves out of the mess that we are in regarding the destruction of human freedom is to completely change the way we think first and foremost, and then to influence other people to change the way that they think. Thought is what is creating our reality. Thoughts leads, lead to behaviors and behaviors lead to situations in the world. And the deplorable nature of human behavior and the deplorable nature of the human situation right now is due to the way the vast majority of human beings continue to think. So let's look at that dynamic for a moment. It's a fact, not my personal opinion, that we are definitely losing this battle for freedom. We are not winning it. It is getting worse. And the people within the freedom movement don't really know how to push the envelope forward. They don't know how to move the ball down the field. They don't know how to climb the mountain. They are 
continuing to think and do things that do not lead to the result that they say that they want. And the evidence of that is that tyranny is continuing. If they were doing the things that were required and they were moving the ball down the field, then freedom would be increasing and we wouldn't be going deeper into tyranny. However, that's not the case. It's objectively observable and measurable. It's not a matter of my opinion. It's fact that we are not winning this battle. People will say, oh, people are waking up, but what's really changed? Nothing has changed. We are still enslaved. That's the human condition, is covert slavery, is slavery through mind control, through the control of how people think and the suppression of their consciousness. And the overwhelming vast majority of people within the so-called freedom movement do not know at all how to get to their goal because they don't understand the governing dynamics of the problem that they face. They don't understand the thing that actually governs the condition of whether an entire species is free or enslaved. And this means that the freedom movement have no true orientation with respect to their stated goal. They don't know where the top of the mountain is, let alone how to get there. Okay. And without such orientation, success toward the goal of true freedom is absolutely impossible. And most people won't tell people this. If they even know it, most people don't know it. And even if they did, they won't tell this to people because they don't want to be uh, looked at as, uh, oh, you're just negative. You're a doomsayer. I'm none of those things. I'm a realist. I'm trying to explain to people how a science works and get them to understand how that works and then align their behavior to that governing dynamic. And it's been one of the most challenging and difficult, or some would describe it as next to impossible things because you're dealing with so many hard-headed people that are attached to their belief systems. And I've, you know, made it, made no bones about the fact that I'm very angry and bitter of, at how things are going and I'm not happy with the progress of this movement and uh, I'm really not happy with the, the way that the people within this movement are dealing with it, treating it, not adjusting to what they need to adjust to to understand what they need to understand. They want to stay in the same way of thought, in the same mentation and believe that the problem can somehow work itself out or that they don't have to change the way that they think and they can still receive the positive benefits and get to the goal that they're trying to get to. And I'm here to tell people that reality simply does not function that way. The laws of nature don't work that way. People have to change the way they think in order for them to change the situation. And not only do they have to change the way they think, they have to influence other people toward that same corrective measure in thinking. So this is where I consider that my work differs within the freedom movement greatly from just about any other teacher, just about any other influencer, just about any other person who is uh, trying to work toward true freedom because I'm talking about the underlying causal dynamics in thought, the causal factors in human thought that have put us in our situation and what really needs to be understood and changed in thought if we're going to get out of the situation of enslavement that we are in and reach the goal of true freedom. So my work correctly identifies the underlying governing dynamics and causal factors which affect human freedom on a mass scale. Most others within the so-called freedom movement only cursorily examine such factors or they ignore them altogether. Then they wonder why the freedom movement makes such little progress or even no progress, no appreciable or recognizable progress over all these years. I tell people the freedom movement was doing far better back in the early 2000s than it is now, shortly after 9-11 occurred and shook a lot of people up to ask a lot of questions. 
it's been largely shut down to a large degree in modern years, in recent years. So my work is that missing piece of the puzzle that will help people actually get to the goal. If they pay attention and really hear what's being said and don't try to interject what they think I'm saying. And without that piece of the puzzle, without those several missing pieces of the puzzle actually, uh, they're not going to be able to truly put the picture together and attain the goal that they say that they seek. And say that that's arrogant, say that, you know, oh, that, that's a lot of hubris for saying that you have the answer. You could say whatever you want, but I'm still correct regarding what I'm about to say. And I've been correct regarding these causal dynamics and very, very, very few people really take the time to listen and understand. Because if they did, you, they would really, truly realize what's missing in their thought process, what's missing in their understanding, and how people can really get to the goal that they say that they want. Obviously, in a short form presentation like this, I'm not going to be able to get to all of those things. We're going to limit this to a very small you know, number of items that I want to cover briefly. So for the totality of my work, you can go to my website, whatonearthishappening.com, and you could listen to my podcast series from the very beginning episode in order at your own pace, and then watch my videos and presentations, and you'll get a very good, solid, uh, big picture view of what is really taking place here on planet Earth and how we can extricate ourselves from the human condition of slavery. The seven factors I'm going to talk about really all deal with the way people still do not understand governing dynamics, the way that their thought process is still in a very underdeveloped state regarding where it needs to get to, to understand the nature of the problem and how to get out of it, and lack of action in many ways that they are not taking. And they are doing actions that they think are going to help, which are never going to help until other foundations are laid. So the very first thing that is the main reason the freedom movement is failing is that the overwhelming majority of the people within the freedom movement still to this day remain ignorant of natural law and how it works. And this is, is the main governing dynamic. So what is natural law? Natural law is a set of universal, inherent, objective non-man-made, eternal, and immutable conditions which govern the consequences of the behaviors of beings with the capacity for understanding the difference between harmful behavior and non-harmful behavior. Yes, that's a mouthful uh, as a working definition for a governing dynamic in nature, but let's just briefly break that down. It's universal. It exists everywhere everywhere in the universe. It's inherent. That means it's part of nature. It's not a constructural idea of the human mind. It's part of nature itself. It's objective. That means it is not subject to human interpretation. It exists independently of how anyone thinks about it. It's non-man-made. That's pretty self-evident what that means. It means it comes from nature, not from humanity. It's eternal. It will never not exist. It exists for as long as the universe exists. It's immutable. That means it cannot be changed. These conditions are unchangeable by anything humanity is capable of doing or any other being or situation. It, it does not make a difference what is done. These conditions remain in effect. And they govern the consequences of our behavior. That's what I mean by governing dynamics. We behave, we have free will to behave, and we can choose our behaviors, but we are not insulated from the consequences of our behavior. And they, these governing dynamics, these natural laws, affect and, are, and, and bind those that have the capacity for understanding the difference between right and wrong. 
They are they do not apply to the animals. They apply to beings that are human and higher level intelligence than human. Meaning you have to have the capacity in the mind for the definitive understanding between behaviors that are rights and between behaviors that are wrongs, wrongdoings that violate human rights. So the understanding of natural law is all centered upon bringing human conscience, that's the knowledge of the difference between right and wrong, into alignment with objective morality. That's act, actually choosing right behavior over wrong behavior and not we're not talking about religion here this is this is absolutely non-religious this has nothing to do with religion this is a science of nature it's a science of behavior and the consequence of behavior and the science of how the dynamics of freedom and tyranny actually work in nature there this constitutes a science that is as of yet unknown by humanity, not in its fullness. Some people have an inkling of it. Some people know more about how it works than others. But as a species, we remain almost completely ignorant regarding natural law, and that's why we're still enslaved. Conscience is the definitive knowledge of which behaviors are rights because they do not initiate harm to other sentient beings and which behaviors are wrong because they do initiate harm to other sentient beings. That's the real definable objective difference between right behavior and wrong behavior it is not a guess it is not something that you find in a religious text it is not something that we invent it's not a constructural idea of the mind when we behave and harm results in the natural world then that is a wrongdoing if we behave and harm is not initiated in the natural world that action is a right it's that's actually very simple if people get their clouded and previously distorted thinking out of their head because they're running mind viruses. And mind viruses prevent people from understanding real governing dynamics, especially natural law. The fundamental nature of humanity's continued loss of freedom is that most human beings do not have a full and accurate understanding of objective morality. The true and actual difference between right behavior and wrong behavior in nature slash reality. Ignorance of true morality leads human beings to erroneously believe that violent and harmful behaviors based upon the belief in authority are somehow morally legitimate and acceptable when they are absolutely not morally legitimate at all. The belief in authority comes out of people's ignorance of natural law. There is no such thing as human authority, never has been, never will be, doesn't exist now, never will exist has never existed. There is a claim, an immoral, violent claim of authority that holds people in duress for disobeying the ruling class's decrees that they call law. And all that is is a usurpation of natural law. It's a usurpation of the laws of the universe, of the creator of the universe. And that's what these people in so-called power in earthly worldly power want they want to usurp the laws of nature and become god that's what satanism is that's what dark occultism is which is we're going to get to in a moment as a result of people's complete lack of understanding of objective morality and their belief in human authority, many, many behaviors which most human beings conduct and condone are completely out of alignment with natural law, which leads to the continuation and furtherance of human slavery. It leads to the creation of slavery, it leads to the continuation of slavery, and it leads to slavery becoming deeper and deeper bondage. This dynamic is expressed in the natural law of the law of freedom. And the, the law of freedom states that as morality and aggregate, uh, sorry, aggregate morality and aggregate freedom are directly proportional to each other. So the total morality of the population of human beings is going to be completely proportional to the total freedom of human beings. So what does that say about how moral human beings are? 
if they're completely proportional degrees and humanity is enslaved, then their aggregate behavior cannot be very moral. When we add it all up and all the human beings add up, if we place like a little index on their behavior of how moral it is from a scale of one to a hundred and added up everybody's moral index in the whole world, it would be pretty damn low. When it comes to not really understanding the true objective difference between rights and wrongs. And that's the problem. That, come, that, that boils it down to the very simple dynamic is that most people don't know the difference between right and wrong still to this day. And they're not being taught the difference. Here is the law of freedom stated as simply as it can be stated. The aggregate freedom of human beings is directly proportional to the aggregate morality of their behavior. That's it. It's that simple. And most people still don't understand that on this planet. And once again, I'm one of the only people really repeating this over and over and saying it to people and telling people you need to understand this. You need to communicate this. You need to teach this to others. And yet, hardly anybody even mentions the word morality in the freedom movement. Very few. Very few. Uh, you know, you hear uh, podcasts and, you know, video shows and people writing books and all of the information you could gather, everybody's just talking about the, the plane of effects. They're talking about the 3D happenings. They're talking about what new technology or system can we put into effect? How can we reform this existing thing? They don't understand what needs to be torn down and completely dismantled and decimated is wrong thought. And what really needs to be integrated and understood is true governing dynamics and how they work in nature. And you hear so few people talking about any of that. And that's why the freedom movement's failing. It's the number one reason. Reason number two the freedom movement is failing is the freedom movement as a whole does not understand the world of the occult and is not making any progress toward its understanding. Very, very, very few people have an accurate understanding of what occultism is and what, in particular, dark occultism is. Now, I'm not here today to explain the entirety of the occult. That's impossible in such a short time. But I just want to talk about what dark occultism is because that's what really has a stranglehold and is injecting all of the mind viruses that people believe and continue to accept as true into human society, which prevents them from an understanding of natural law. So one of the things that's been the most difficult for me to explain to people is what Satanism really is versus what it is not. Satanism is not the worship of the Christian devil in Christian mythos. Sorry to break, burst anyone's bubble, but if you believe that, you have a child's mentality regarding what Satanism really is. And it's sad. And it really should be improved. It, it, it's unacceptable, quite frankly. What Satanism really is, is an ancient occult religion. And occult simply means hidden so when you hear the word occult, if you're triggered by it, then that, that means there's more ignorance present. Everybody in this movement should understand by this point that occult means hidden. It means it's hidden from the sight of the average human being. That's what Satanism is, a religion that the true masters of the world do not want the average dolt in our society to understand because if they really understand that, then they understand their master's mindset and techniques. And they don't want that getting out to the public. They want them believing that it's just devil worship. So Satanism is an ancient occult religion comprised of diverse and interconnected networks of worldwide adherence. It is not just rich white men. It is a very diverse group of ancient master psychologists that are manipulating the entire body of humanity. At its ideological core, this religion postulates that knowledge of how the human psyche works and operates and knowledge of how the laws of the universe work and operate should actually be hidden. They should be occulted. They should be kept only by this priest class, by a small group 
of manipulators. And then when they have a knowledge differential because they hold the knowledge and other people are ignorant of it, they can create a power differential in the world over the people who are still remaining ignorant of that very critical knowledge about how the most important things in life actually work. It is far more accurate to per perceive dark occultists in general as mass psychologists and mass mass psychologists and mass psychological manipulators and social engineers psychological manipulators and social engineers who do this dark mental manipulation and dark mental sorcery upon the entire population to give them wrong ideas that they can continue to pursue which will never lead them anywhere it gets them treading on the hamster wheel endlessly so this social engineer ruling class hold and wield hidden or occult information in ways which, ways which will exploit and enslave the ignorant masses and they've been doing this since time immemorial and they've been using the same techniques and there's no indication that they need to change their techniques or that their hold on humanity will slip or fade because we still have the same level of ignorance in our society over the in the general population the same level of ignorance regarding natural law and the world of the occult and i see no major progress being made by the freedom movement to uh, narrow the gap in that knowledge gap. Very little, too little progress toward that goal is being made. Reason number three the freedom movement is fa failing is most people within this movement constantly try to pass the buck to someone else. And they say that's someone else's responsibility. Most people within the freedom movement believe that it is not their own personal responsibility to become an influencer and teacher of others. This is the main responsibility that they want to shirk. They want to be the person in the audience eternally. They don't want to move their level of knowledge to such a degree and an extent that they truly can teach other people objective morality and natural law and how occultism really works. They incorrectly believe and insist that this responsibility and burden falls to others, but it is not theirs. How many people pat me on the back endlessly? You're doing such a great job. Your presentations are awesome, Mark. I learned a lot from you. And then I turn around and say, well, what are you doing? Oh, nothing right now. Because deep down inside their mind, they're running a mental virus program that says to them, that's someone else's job. That's not for me, that's for them. I see it all the time, I hear it all the time. Most people sit on the sidelines and observe the battle for freedom taking place as if they were watching it on a screen instead of engaging it with active participation themselves. Then, when nothing changes, they feel they have a right to complain when the battle for freedom is going poorly. And it is going poorly. Through their own inaction and refusal to own their personal responsibility to become involved, they are literally causing freedom to be destroyed at an even faster rate. Let me say that again for people re really listen to what I'm saying here. By this refusal to accept their own responsibility to get involved in the battle, when they're still sitting on the sidelines and saying, that's not for me, that's for someone else to do, that's someone else's job, not mine, they are literally causing freedom to be destroyed at a faster rate for us and for all future generations of humanity. And yeah, that's, that's being tough on people. And get as offended as you like, because that's exactly the truth. If you're not actively involved and you're not actively influencing other people to change their thoughts, and let's get it straight, you got to get your own mental viruses out of the way and you got to get your own thoughts straight about governing dynamics and how they work. If, if you haven't done that and then you haven't begun to influence other people, you're part of the problem. You're not part of the solution. You are actually part of the problem that is causing freedom to be continuously destroyed. Get as offended about it as you like. It's still going to be true. 
Number four, the fourth reason the freedom movement is failing is most people within this movement have a perpetual desire to stay in their comfort zone. This is very connected with step with reason number three. Most people within the freedom movement do not want to take any risk. They don't want to make any sacrifices. I did a whole presentation at a former uh, uh, event for conscious resistance that was all about the lack of people's willingness to make sacrifices of themselves and their time and their resources and their energy within this movement. Most people don't want to take any risk, make any sacrifices. They don't want to endure any hardships. They don't want to contribute any time, effort, or resources, or put any skin in the game in any way. They want to show up like it's some social event, and they want to listen to what other people have to say. And that's just not going to cut it. It's not going to get it done. Action is required. Most people within the freedom movement act as armchair quarterbacks, remaining in their own personal comfort zone while cheering on those who are actually doing the hard work to move the ball forward. Most people in this movement feel that if they become further involved in the war for freedom, that they would quote unquote have something to lose. You know, it would affect them negatively in some way. That's why most people sit on the sidelines because of cowardice. And in fact, this attitude that, hey, well, I have something to lose. I can't speak out. I can't get involved. You know what that really means, that attitude? It means you've already lost. You've contributed to the losing dynamic. And that's one of the reasons why we're losing. We are not beating the social engineers. We are not beating the ruling class. We are not beating the dark occultists. We are getting our ass handed to us. We're getting clobbered. We're getting absolutely slaughtered in this battle. It's not even close. It's a joke. They know it. They think that it's a joke. They know that it's a joke. And so do I. And it's because of these types of attitudes, not learning the important causal dynamics, constantly thinking something that is not the solution is the solution, not understanding the true difference between right and wrong. How many people within this movement I hear still taking total religious, a total attitude of religiosity when it comes to the difference between right and wrong? They think the answers to right and wrong are going to be found in a book, in some religious text. The answers of what really constitute the difference between right and wrong are written on the human heart, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the problem is people aren't in touch with that dynamic. You know, that's why they don't have a lot of courage. They got no heart in the game. They got no skin in the game. They got no heart in the game. They don't have their guts in the game. And most of them don't have their mind in the game either. And it, you add up all those failures, it adds up to a failure in the aggregate sense. The job that has been done has been inefficient, has been inadequate. It's not good enough. And I'm going to keep saying that to people until it starts to become somewhat decent. Our efforts have been horrific in the last decade to decade and a half. Horrific. And that's why this movement is largely falling apart and not making progress forward. Part of it is reason number five, the mindset of I'm not blank enough. And you could fill this in with a million different things. Let's just look at some of them briefly. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not motivated enough. I'm not courageous enough. I'm not young enough. I hear this one. That's for younger people to get involved with and make that kind of effort. I don't have enough time. There's not enough time for me to learn all that, that stuff. There's not enough time for me to learn the technology that I need to learn to go and influence other people and put that out into the world through media. I don't have enough resources to do those things. This whole attitude that you're, you're not sufficient and not enough, it's, that's why it's playing out and manifesting as a self-fulfilling prophecy and it's coming out as an effort that's not enough, that's not good enough. It's because of people's thought that they're not good enough. 
People are good enough to do that. There's some, for some reason, because of self-loathing that's deep, deeply nested in their psyche, they're not beginning and saying, I can't be that influencer. I can't be that person. I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, guess what? Like the old saying goes in the law of attraction, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, either way, you're right. That's the problem. Mental viruses telling people to tell themselves, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not talented enough to get involved and do this. Oh, they don't have enough resources, they don't have enough money, they don't have enough equipment, they don't know where to begin. How many times I've heard this from people? I don't know where to start. Start where you're at. Start by acknowledging what is. How about just start with the very simple thing. Start with where you're at, start with what is true, start with where you know you want to go and the factors that actually get you there. That's where you start. You got to get out of the mindset that this is going to be some political, there's going to be some political solution. You got to get out of the mindset there's going to be some financial solution. You even got to get out of the mindset there's going to be some technological solution. Technology is a component to the solution, but it's not the totality of it. Once you get your mindset straight, you got to influence other people. And the mechanism for that influence is modern day technology and media. But one thing for sure is we got to get out of this dejected mindset of we can't. I'm not telling people we can't. I'm telling people up to this point, you've done a terrible job at moving toward your stated goal. That doesn't mean you can't do it. Don't mishear what I'm saying and think I'm telling you you can't do it. I'm telling people the exact opposite. You absolutely can do it. You just haven't been doing it. There's a big difference between telling somebody the job that you have been doing is completely inadequate to the attainment of the goal versus telling them you can't do it. It's impossible. I've never said that once ever. In my entire broadcasting career, in my entire presenting career, I have never told people it is an impossibility to achieve the goal of true freedom because I know that it is. I just know it has certain requirements and other people don't understand those requirements because they don't understand the governing dynamics of how freedom actually works or is destroyed in the world. Once they understand those dynamics, it is absolutely possible for them to make real, true, lasting, positive change. I'm not black-pilled, folks. I'm just very dejected over how poorly our performance has been in this battle. That doesn't Black-pilled means you think it's impossible. I wouldn't be talking to anybody if I thought it was impossible. Number six, the sixth reason the freedom movement is currently failing, and one of the biggest, is people within this movement are constantly making endless excuses for the evil behavior of others. And mostly the people who I'm talking about are the order followers of our world to a large extent. The police, the military, even people within the medical, educational, business establishments, they're order followers to a large extent, but the biggest order followers of the world are absolutely police and military. And they're the people who are actually manifesting what I refer to as the dark new world order of slavery. We can have a positive new world order of true freedom and true responsibility and truly treating people with respect according to their natural rights. That is possible. But right now, the people who are building and creating the dark new world order of total enslavement are the police and the military. And if you're offended by that statement, get as offended as you like and recognize that it's an indicator that you absolutely don't understand the dynamic that you need to. I hear people all the time saying, these people have families to feed. They have, you know, re personal responsibilities in life that they have to meet. And people depend on them and they're, they're a core member of a family unit. And making excuses for them destroying other people's freedom because they say they have a family. I couldn't care less that you have a family and no one else should either. When you're conducting evil, 
You're not only doing something that is completely immoral to other people, you're bringing down total enslavement on yourself and your own family. How could people say you're possibly doing anything good for them? It doesn't matter whether you're doing something that sustains their physical survival in the short term when you're destroying their freedom and ultimately their soul in the long term. People have to stop making excuses for these evil people. They are following the orders of the true psychopath ruling class and in doing so they're destroying freedom for everyone. I've done an entire presentation on the dynamics of order following and how it's always immoral. No matter what order you follow, it's immoral. Because you're abdicating your own personal responsibility to judge objective morality for yourself. And you're saying someone else can do that, and I'll just act unthinkingly, without judging, whether it's right or wrong. We have to stop making excuses for these people. They are the most immoral people alive. This is true immorality. People want to talk about people taking substances or engaging in same-sex sex. I mean, you have to be kidding that this is what people still in the modern world, consensual behavior, they believe is immoral. Instead of people violating other people's rights and destroying freedom and removing the free will of other people. And believing there's some authority figure, that they're God that they make laws, now, or they follow the orders of people who claim that they're, they're the lawmaker of the universe. Please. Get as offended as you like, people. The police and the military are the enemy. The police and the military are the people who are destroying freedom. Make no mistake about it. If you don't understand that dynamic, you're very ill-informed, and you're very, very naive. You're childishly naive. And the more people who make excuses for all the freedom-destroying order followers of our world, the more these order followers become further emboldened and will continue the immoral behaviors that they're currently conducting. They will be less likely to ever consider the immorality of their actions the more excuses we make for them. I'm going to give a big example here, and I don't care who it offends. Because this is what I see people saying within the freedom movement. Oh, these people, they have families to feed. Everybody has a family to feed in one way or another. They're, no, they're nobody special, and that doesn't give them any special rights. Here's train loads full of people in boxcars and cattle cars being taken to their slaughter at a concentration camp in the Nazi regime in the 19, late 1930s and early 1940s. Probably this picture is taken in the early 1940s, probably around 42, 43. And you have the conductor of the train taking them to their death, knowingly taking them to their death, and you have people within the Nazi SS killing squads waiting for them to arrive and take them in to wherever they're going to be gassed, whether it's going to be a mobile unit or a, a fixed gas chamber. Now, would you, if you could go back in time, would you say to these two men right here in this picture to quit their jobs? Would you tell them to quit their jobs? Answer that question. Would it be right of you to tell them to quit their jobs? Would, would you make excuses for them? Would you say, oh, I understand you have a family to feed. Think about how silly that sounds. Think about how retarded and dumb that sounds. That you would go and say, oh, guys, I understand you got a family to feed, so you can't quit this job. I mean, that's literally what is happening today. It's just progressing at a slower rate. See, that's what was learned by the social engineers who really manipulated World War II and all of this. They learned that they can't do it that fast. They got to do it slowly in a stepwise progression over time so that the dumb people of the world don't catch on to what's happening to them. If they do it too fast, then they get resistance. But imagine people wouldn't tell these people to quit their job because they have families to feed. And yeah, it is that situation. People go, oh, it's not that situation. You're wrong. It is that situation. We're there already. We're there already. We're not going there. We're there. 
They just haven't completely pulled the trigger on the executions and, and the, the, the death that they really want to conduct. But the people who are actually building this total control system are cut from the same cloth as those Nazis standing there. And if you wouldn't tell those guys to quit their jobs, that's why the freedom movement is failing. You won't tell the police and military today to quit their jobs. You still believe they're somehow moral. Hey, this guy had a family to feed, right? Why wouldn't I make excuses for some high up member of the Gestapo or the SS? You know, he's got a family too. He's got, the, he's got the, you know, the, the whole unit there. He's got the wife, he's got the son, he's got the dog. Well, why not just go, go back to the concentration camp and like, let's get some more people gassed, you know? Let's do that. Why don't we? Would you tell this guy to quit his job, even if it meant that his family would struggle? I absolutely would have the right to tell someone like that to quit their job and make their family struggle. Just like I have the right today to tell the police and military to quit their job and allow your family to struggle if that's the only means that they could currently be supported. They'll have to struggle for a while till you find some other means that is in right livelihood instead of wrong livelihood. We make excuses for evil, and then we wonder why more evil happens. And believe me, most people within this movement, they are bootlickers of the order followers, and they believe that they're necessary. I, you know how many people still within the, the, the so-called freedom movement I hear saying, well, we need police. Yeah. We need enslavement. We need our masters to whip us. We need to get out in the fields and pick whatever crop they want us to pick. We need to do their bidding. We need to follow their orders. Excuses for evil are not going to get it done. They're going to make it worse. And finally, the seventh reason why we're losing is people don't know how to get the message out. They don't know how to get the message of natural law, objective morality truly choosing the right over the wrong, what the true right and wrong actually are, that they're objective and not subjective. Get the word out regarding the occult and the methods of manipulation that they do. And that's because they don't know technology. They don't know how to actually create media using technology. They're complete Luddites. They say, that's not for me, that's for someone else. I don't have the time, effort, money, motivation, whatever, age to learn. And they sit on the sidelines, not influencing. They sit on the sidelines cheering on, but not actually influencing others because they don't know what to do. They don't know where to begin in this field of endeavor. They don't know how to actually become a content creator themselves so that they can influence the minds of other people. To that end, I actually offer a course called How to Become the True Media yearly. Um, this isn't an advertisement for that. I'm just saying that's my contribution to helping people who don't know how to get the message out. I show them how. I not only show them the governing dynamics and explore that with people in my work, but then Half of the year, I actually teach them the methodologies of how to get the message out. And that's what we all need to be learning and doing. The way that people are going to be influenced is through receiving media through the alternative forms of media on the internet. And unless people become a content creator and learn how to influence people in that regard, we're not making the aggregate dynamic any better. Watching from the sidelines isn't going to cut it. Wishing for it to be so isn't going to cut it. Learning the governing dynamics that you need to learn and then teaching them by creating media in the world so that many, many, many other people can be influenced by that media and learn the same things that you learn is the answer. That's the great work. So I think that's a good place to leave this short form presentation because I think it very briefly but very highly accurately explains to people why the freedom movement isn't making any progress through these seven basic dynamics and exploring them in brief here. Maybe at some point I'll do an extended version of this presentation to flesh out and explore these dynamics even more. 
Ultimately, it all comes down to doing the great work of first transforming your own mind and purging it of the mental virus viruses given to us by the social engineer ruling class. And then secondly, we have to broadcast those ideas out into the field of consciousness to influence other people through creative media that we get involved in making so that it spreads the message and eventually, hopefully, makes it go viral so that true human freedom can be manifested into our world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your kind attention today.